Th thanks a lot, Karola. So, uh, uh, hello everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, today, I will talk about three-phase volume of fluid simulations. So, uh, it's, 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 these are three immiscible uh, liquids, and volume of fluid is the yeah, WOF uh, that 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 is known. So, uh, all the things that I will be talking about today have been done using Basilisk. So that's the only time uh, in the beginning when I want to get that uh, out of the picture. So uh, the Basilisk is, is a free software program developed by Stefan Popini and his team. And it's, it's a great software if you want to learn and if you want to know more about it, please find me or, or Yusuf. So Yusuf is the other person in, in POF who works with, uh, with, with Basilisk, who is also in the audience. OK. Good. So we will today we will uh, uh, we will talk about uh, one um, uh, simulation methodology that I developed in order to handle uh, three different immiscible uh, liquids uh, using the uh, the geometric volume of fluid as it is as it is known. Uh, and and before I, I go into the uh, the details of this uh, solver, I would like to first uh, uh, talk to you about uh, what are the motivations behind using this uh, this method, or like uh, more precisely, what is the, what is the motivation behind using this uh, using the model that I have developed for three different liquids, and a bit of historical background for that. So the main motivation that will keep coming up uh, over and over again is, is 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 wetting on solids actually. So I mean, wetting on solids, you can also think of uh, of of this as uh, as a three phase system. Uh, where uh, one one system is 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 the drop, the second one is is air, and the third is a rigid substrate, uh, so as to speak. So this rigid substrate cannot deform, uh, and and I would then generalize it to three different uh, liquids in the in the in the next part of the talk. So what happens when we bring a liquid drop uh, close to to a to a substrate? I must uh, admit that some of it might be uh, trivial, but I will just do it just to uh, just to keep everyone on the same page. Uh, so once this this drop uh, is 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 close to the to the substrate, we can we can define uh, something that uh, that Dejan uh, introduced as a as a spreading uh, uh, factor, which is not so. If if I write a spreading factor for uh, or a spreading coefficient for for the drop, it's nothing but the surface tension coefficient between uh, air and the substrate. So or the the free energy between the air and the substrate minus the two uh, uh, interfacial tensions where drop is involved. So that's uh, gamma AS minus the sum of gamma DA plus gamma uh, uh, DS. Uh, and uh, what is also important to to note here: so if the spreading coefficient is 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 uh, is is negative, um, uh, so what happens then? So so let's say if it is negative and we we wait for t tends to infinity, so we are waiting a long time. Then what we will see is that if the spreading coefficient is negative, then we get an equilibrium shape of this of this this, this drop. And where this angle theta, uh, there is a, a small error in the in the schematic, but okay, this angle theta is 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 here, and this angle theta is given by this young Dupre uh, um, uh, equilibrium uh, contact angle, which is which is nothing but what I have written over here. And what happens when this spreading coefficient is either positive or zero? Then uh, the drop has has an affinity towards uh, both the the substrate as well as air. Uh, so you can imagine that if this this uh, guy is positive. Then that means that uh, gamma AS is greater than both uh, the sum of gamma DA plus uh, gamma uh, gamma DS, which means that it, it is it is thermodynamically more um, uh, favorable to have a thin liquid uh, a layer instead of having a contact between the substrate and the and the and the, and the surrounding air. Uh, also, so the thickness of this uh, liquid uh, layer would be uh, governed by or would be determined by the volume of the drop. As well as Van der Waals forces, uh, um, uh, it uh, provide like uh, depending on what the size and other other, other properties. Uh, what can also happen, uh, by the way, just to complete the picture, is that uh, we can also define, let's say, a spreading uh, factor because because again, these are these are just three different uh, uh, mediums. We can also define a spreading factor for air, and if that is positive, then air would like to spread everywhere. So it would like to uh, have an interface with drop as well as with the, with the substrate. And if there is no gravity, then you get something something like this. And this is what uh, uh, experimentalists would know as, as a super hydrophobic substrate uh, over here. Uh, OK, uh, so this is uh, what happens for waiting on solids. Uh, mind that this is uh, I'm talking about what happens at t tends to infinity. Uh, so now uh, I, I come to the to the main uh, let's say uh, assumption that I will be taking throughout this talk, and, and on which I have based the three phase uh, 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 model that I will that I will talk about, and that's the precursor film assumption. So what I am going to talk about in this in the next few slides are, are present in in this uh, these two very nice. Uh, uh, review papers, one first by Dejan and then the second one by Bon et al. And, and I, I, I urge you all to read it. it it's a very nice, uh, uh, these two articles are, are, are quite nice. So, so what they say uh, is, is once you bring this uh, drop close to a substrate, 
and by the way i, I am uh, throughout the talk i will only uh, only talk about uh, positive spreading coefficients so i won't talk about the one where you have an equilibrium uh, contact angle only the one where uh, where the liquid spreads uh, everywhere and and once that happens so so what what uh, what they say or what what is what is uh, perceived is that the moment this drop comes in contact with the, with the substrate there is a, a thin precursor layer that forms on on the substrate and this precursor layer is of the order of 1 to 10 nanometers which is uh, essentially a size of 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 of, of, of a molecule and, uh, and 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 the uh, the logical reason or the let's say the theoretical reason why this should happen uh, goes as 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 following that it's easier for a for a molecule to uh, to uh, to 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 go and cover the entire substrate rather than having the uh, the liquid bulk to move right so even before the liquid bulk could move the moment these two uh, uh, things come in contact there would be a precursor film which is which is a few molecules thick because it's easier for the molecules to flow as compared to the uh, to to the bulk of course uh, and, uh, and and the moment this happens the spreading factor that we were talking about goes to zero uh, and and the reason is now there is no uh, 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 substrate air interface it's it's essentially so if i if i go across this substrate to air then first i have to go from substrate to the to the liquid and then from the liquid to to air so that uh, that surface tension which was uh, gamma as over it is nothing but but the sum of the other two right and then so sd becomes uh, ex exactly zero and uh, then the the drop will start to spread so the bulk will start to move uh, so uh, just just note that this uh, picture that i have drawn on the on the on the right here it's far away from the center so it's, it's so this is not the center line it's it's far away and so after some time you will see that there is there is a liquid bulk and then there is a there's a precursor film on which this this uh, uh, this this the microscopic contact line is, is moving uh, and uh, um, so 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 just to give some some numbers so the bulk could be uh, in the order of uh, micro uh, millimeters sorry and and the film is is usually in the order of 1 to 10 uh, microns uh, and so so how does this help us so let me uh, try to give you a pragmatic way of of deriving tanner spreading law uh, which usually we do uh, by by using uh, lubrication approximation but here i am going to use by using um, some sort of force argument or some sort of scaling argument by using this uh, by invoking this precursor film so what happens is that if i draw a control volume very close to the uh, to this microscopic contact line over here then the net force which is uh, which is to to the to the right is nothing but gamma times 1 minus cos theta uh, note that i am ignoring the pressure term that that you would have to write in uh, coming from this uh, on this small uh, uh, control surface from the left because i just assume that this is small enough that those effects would be would be negligible uh, and then uh, uh, this is nothing but so i can just use some trigonometry and get this gamma theta square and, uh, um, and and this we need to balance this force with the with the net viscous uh, uh, force which is uh, nothing but eta times the velocity gradient times some some length scale which is this this r of of the of the of the drop uh, of course this theta and now imagine that if we if we are talking about uh, much further away in time so that the the drop is is really flat so, so it doesn't look like this but actually it's so flat that i can write uh, uh, and i can essentially write this theta as h over r where h is nothing but the uh, height of this this droplet so i'm really talking about a thin um, uh, uh, like like uh, really tiny tiny like like uh, really uh, uh, shallow droplets uh, so as to say yeah one question uh, rose um before you go on here um the precursor film that spreads yeah. out um is there any sort of uh, bound um on the outer like will it spread out infinite like indefinitely sort of towards like uh, yeah yeah, yeah. The uh, i there's some so, kind of restriction to that so 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 the last slide like so so in, in the coming slide i will i will try to get there because see okay. Uh, it, 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 there, there has to be a limit to that, right? I mean, uh, so if if it would spread to infinity at t at t is equal to zero, then you you have an infinite uh, velocity for for your molecules. That definitely cannot happen, right? Uh, so so what what you can imagine is that this. Uh, so so if 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 I if I start looking at my substrate, then you would see that uh, to some extent you you will have like uh, uh, maybe five molecules, then you have four molecules, then you have uh, uh, two molecules, one molecule, and at some point it will just become dry. Because because here it's it's not a continuum uh, picture anymore, it's it's more of a thermodynamic picture, right? And this yeah. precursor film is in equilibrium with the surrounding, right? And 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 it's possible that there might be dry patches as well. And and again, I must mention that uh, at those scales, a wonder wall and other forces kick in as well, right? Yeah. 
So uh, if you talk about, let's say, what happens in real life, in, 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 uh, as, for, as for the physics, uh, it cannot go on uh, indefinitely. Right, uh, but but uh, that but but the, the, then an assumption comes in when we try to model it, and that's that's a different story that I will uh, come to in, in a minute. Okay. Uh, so coming back to yeah to deriving this this standard law using this uh, pragmatic approach, now we can just balance these two forces out, and then uh, depending on whether we are talking about two D or three D, either h times r would be a constant or h times r square would be a constant, and that gives us either uh, one one seventh or one tenth. So so one tenth is. Is 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 uh, um, uh, more well known uh, in the, from from an experimental point of view that this is the Tanner law, or sometimes we'll also call it the uh, time Tanner uh, uh, Voinoff uh, law as well. Uh, okay, so 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 this precursor film gives you a very nice uh, a pragmatic way to to get this uh, the scaling uh, law. Of course, you can also reach the same conclusion if you uh, go through the lubrication uh, point of view. But the question arises: that do uh, precursor films even exist? Right. I mean, because it's it's sure it should be there from a thermodynamic point of view, but have ha, has anyone seen it before? And the answer is 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 yes for for solids. So there is so so the earliest paper I could find where uh, someone actually went in and measured the thickness of this precursor film is is this uh, very nice paper from 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 a French group, uh, which was uh, a molecular layering in the spreading of wetting liquid drops. And and there they use I think they used uh, some some fancy techniques um, uh, to 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 measure this this thickness. And I would just bring out one uh, one snapshot from from that picture. So essentially, uh, the the x-axis is the is the is the is the lateral extent of the drop, and the y-axis is the thickness. And you can see that uh, uh, there is this tiny uh, layer between the substrate and and the drop, which is like uh, at least it's exactly one nanometer. So this is ten angstrom, which is which is one nanometer. Which is equal to the uh, molecular length of the drop that these these people were using uh, in their in their uh, in their uh, experiments, uh, and uh, there is there are also some some recent works because this is 1989. So there is also a paper from from Gareth McKinley's group where they also try to measure this uh, this precursor film on a, on a solid substrate. So for a solid substrate, this precursor film does exist. Uh, however. Uh, there is a few words of caution because now we are uh, going to uh, leverage the existence of this precursor film uh, in order to model a kind of drop uh, spreading or, or kind of uh, systems that we usually work with, right? And when the moment you 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 try to model it using uh, uh, one of the uh, finite volume techniques or or even in any technique where uh, uh, which which we often use in the in the group, uh, one thing that changes is that uh, from from a few nanometers. This uh, precursor film needs to be a thickness of delta, where delta is the grid size. And even the uh, the best uh, finite volume uh, methods can only resolve uh, through uh, if if it's 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 axis symmetry or if it is two D, it can resolve through let's say three orders of magnitude that that I'm aware of, right? So which means that if this uh, drop is of the order of millimeter, then this delta would be of the order of microns, right? And and this is uh, uh, technically speaking not correct because this precursor film needs to be really small. Uh, but what it helps you is that it can uh, help us to uh, regularize the the singularity that comes up uh, at at the contact line. I mean, uh, if if any one of uh, I mean, if if anyone goes and look into these uh, uh, contact line papers, right? So you always come across this singularity that comes up the moment you have a, a three phase contact line like this because the stress and everything diverges at this at this corner. So, in order to regularize that uh, that that singularity, uh, what what uh, uh, numericists like us do is that we assume that okay, maybe we can assume a, a thin precursor film uh, uh, um, upstream of this this contact line, and then these singularities would would go away. So, there is a, a physical uh, background of why uh, this film should be there and why we can use it. But the moment you write a model out of it, uh, just take this with a with a pinch of salt. That uh, now what we are doing is, uh, is is we are not really using a precursor film, but actually we are uh, spreading these droplets on a on a on a pre-wetted uh, substrate, uh, right? And what also uh, helps in these uh, cases is is the fact that the moment this uh, h, which is the uh, which is the let's say the height of this uh, this this uh, this precursor film in the model, the moment this hf uh, uh, goes to uh, zero, then you can show through rigorous uh, calculations that this should approach the uh, the precursor film uh, uh, situation. Okay, uh, so that is uh, the part uh, which 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 I want to talk about in terms of uh, uh, let's say waiting on a substrate. So that was more of a background and the historical context of what I uh, so what I'm going to leverage when I talk about three fluids in contact. So if you have any questions up until now, 
now is a good time to uh, get those out of the of, of the picture before i went into before i go into uh, three fluids in in contact uh what's just uh mm -hmm. i think um minkush has a question uh yes yeah. uh actually uh, just i uh, you mentioned that you are going to leverage the thin precursor film and it's also to avoid the singularity and the stress and everything diverge so i was just curious if that you don't take uh, so probably your code is like needing that bounding conditions, but if you don't have that, if you have the diverging stress, can your code like solve something or is it like the bounding conditions which you are getting from this previous film and your code won't be able to do anything if you don't leverage that? No, so 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 since we use both both Yusuf and I and in the Basilisk community, we use a finite volume methods, right? Uh, so there is, or 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 in any discrete solver, uh, actually, uh, you you have a minimum length scale in the system, which is the the length of your grid, right? So even if uh, you have, uh, um, uh, uh, so, uh, you don't have a precursor film, you you would still have an inherent slip length uh, inbuilt in the in the in the numerical model, uh, which is the the size of the grid. Okay, so so there are also questions about okay that you uh, which one is better whether whether using it uh, solving it using a precursor film is better or whether uh, uh, leaving it up to the code to to regularize it by using the grid sizes is 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 is, is okay right uh, so those questions are there and those questions are open I mean uh, so we, we, I think there are a few papers where people exactly compare the results coming out of a Navier slip condition if you may and uh, the precursor film uh, model as well. So yeah, I, I guess that answer, does that answer your question? Because it, it so so see uh, when you do numerics, you can always add in models from outside if you want, right? Uh, but then the question comes in that which one would you prefer? So it, it comes down to preference and it comes down to what reproduces your experiments or what reproduces real life in 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 a better way. Yeah. yeah yes. No, it really uh, perfectly answered the question. But uh, just to add to that, uh, why didn't you use the grid size and chose the slip? Uh, so the precursor fill instead of your limited grid size in that case. So so so, so usually when I do it uh, on on uh, on solids, I use the grid size model because Yusuf also has a very nice paper on that. I think it's called uh, uh, it is on Lando Lewis um, uh, thin films or something like that. And, it, and and they use this uh, grid size regularization there. Uh, but when 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 I moved to the three fluids in in contact, then I I I couldn't make the grid size uh, regularization work that nicely, especially for the cases where you have these positive spreading coefficients. And and so 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 I'm, I'm, I'm so the, the the background was more to what I'm leveraging when I moved to three fluids. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So, so you can use both methods. I mean, both methods are fine. Whatever works for the system is is good enough. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So, is there any other question, or should I go on now? I think we can move on. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So, so what 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 about three fluids in contact? So uh, for that, uh, I, I, I recently found out, I mean, uh, when, when I started this uh, three fluid uh, project, so I, I found out many papers from, from Stanley G. Mason. Uh, I don't know uh, if, if, if physicists know him or not, but he's a very well-known uh, chemical engineer and, and he has written uh, tons of paper on, on these uh, different, like say, different fluids in, 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 in contact. So I'm, I'm bringing in one of his paper. I think this is from Science which is like coalescence of two immiscible liquids. So you have liquid one, liquid two, and of course a third medium is, is air. And then you bring both of them uh, close together and, and see what happens. And, and this paper is from 1969, but I really uh, 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 would urge all the experimentalists here to go and look at the figures in, in, this, in, this, uh, in, this, uh, in this paper. I mean, they are amazing, uh, at least uh, uh, from, from my standards. They look really nice. Uh, so uh, we have two droplets. They come in uh, contact, and they uh, we see uh, we will see what will happen. Uh, so, so there is one more, let's say, constraint that I'm gonna put in. That is, a gamma two three is greater than gamma one three. It really doesn't matter because it's it's just like uh, uh, looking at from the left or the right, right? Because uh, I can just take this assumption without a loss of of generality. Uh, now we can define uh, three spreading coefficients. So I'm gonna call it uh, S i. And, and that essentially, because there are three interfaces, so three surface and coefficients, so there are uh, three spreading uh, uh, coefficients as well. 
So what happens when uh, 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 S1, S2 uh, are, are both negative, whereas S3 is positive. So S3 was the, was a surrounding medium. And you would see that the moment you bring these two droplets close together, they would uh, repel uh, each other. So it will just uh, separate out and they would like to stay in this uh, configuration. Uh, of course, this happens at T tends to infinity. So now what happens when all three uh, spreading coefficients are negative, then you get what uh, what people in, in, uh, uh, often refer to as the Newman triangle. So uh, so you have uh, three uh, uh, surface tension uh, 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 forces which, which balance each other exactly at this uh, uh, contact line. And this is uh, the, the three phase equivalent of young Dupre uh, uh, angle, uh, basically. And, and what happens when, uh, when let's say, S1 is positive, whereas both S2 and S3 are negative, then the, the blue uh, droplet in this uh, scenario will engulf the, the, the red droplet. And uh, as, as I mentioned before, that I will only be talking about the third case, which is the case where this Newman triangle cannot exist, where S1 has a positive spreading coefficient, uh, so as to speak. Uh, so uh, what happens then? So this is, uh, I, will, I will just uh, jump in and show you the, uh, what happens in, in one of the simulations. So the moment this comes in contact, uh, again, the assumption that I take is that the moment these two drops, are, uh, uh, they are coming in contact. Uh, by the way, I'm, 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 I apologize for, uh, for changing the color scheme. So, so, just, uh, so, so just take that, this uh, from here. Uh, this, this is uh, uh, one now. Okay, so this is the drop that is gonna engulf uh, in, in the coming, uh, in, in the next few slides. Uh, so the moment these two come in contact, uh, what I assume is that there is a precursor film that uh, comes up uh, at, at t is equal to zero, which, which covers this whole droplet, which covers the whole, uh, the entire uh, left droplet. And now you can imagine that the equilibrium state for the, for the red interface, right, uh, would be a sphere. And, and you can see that now we can uh, solve the dynamics quite nicely. So it will try to become, uh, become spherical and, and in doing so, it will engulf this, uh, this, uh, this blue uh, droplet. Uh, so, so remember, so what, what we are trying to do is uh, we are leveraging that precursor film uh, analogy or that precursor film, uh, film, 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 film model in order to uh, solve for the dynamics that happens between, uh, uh, let's say, t is equal to zero and t, is, uh, t tends to, to infinity. Uh, so this was, let's say, one uh, one one such uh, case. Now we we talk about, let's say, in order to further understand uh, these uh, uh, simplifications, let's let's take some some examples. The first example that we are going to do is is to recover uh, Johnny's uh, spreading law. So Johnny has a very nice spreading law when uh, when when oil droplets are trying to spread on on water baths, and uh, that we are trying to uh, we will will try and recover. So before that, we will take make a simplification. So Going from this uh, configuration, we, uh, as physicists, we love to have spherical cows. So uh, we will use a configuration which looks like this. So I'm making uh, the drop to infinite, right? So it has an infinite uh, uh, radi radius of curvature, which is, it has a, it has a, it has a, it has a zero curvature, so it becomes a bark. And then I will let this uh, drop one spread on, on two. Uh, so that's the uh, so so what happens if if we if we uh, try and do a one to one analogy with the precursor film analogy? Uh, so it is that okay. The moment this uh, uh, blue drop comes in contact with the with the bath, there is a, a, a thin precursor. Yeah. Um. One question. Um. Could you please elaborate a little bit more how you use the precursor film in your engulfment simulation? Like what so... exactly? How exactly do you do you um, use it there? Yeah. So essentially, uh, if, if 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 you zoom in, or or if if I would draw it in as as uh, as a separate interface, so I have two interfaces, right? So one is precisely this uh, blue drop, which is here. So that's my one volume of fluid tracer, if you may, and the second volume of fluid tracer is uh, is 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 this. Okay, and and the superposition of these two pictures would give you uh, this configuration that you are seeing at t is equal to zero. Okay, and uh, and I just let the simulation go from there, and and of course, so so it's 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 so so this one is, and 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 this is not an equilibrium, right? So the, the equilibrium configuration would then be that the that the red guy uh, tries to become spherical, and in doing it can do so by uh, engulfing the, the the blue blue uh, blue droplet uh, into it so and this uh, so basically the diff so this this is what i call a precursor film so the precursor film is is uh, if, if i draw them both on top of each other so it would be like this yeah yeah 
So this 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 is a zero thickness. I mean, zero. When I say zero thickness, I mean thickness in the order of grid size. Uh, so zero thickness uh, precursor film that is present on this uh, this blue blue droplet at t is equal to zero. So that's the uh, the most uh, uh, important and the and the and the and the most uh, let's say if if there has to be a criticism, it has to be at t is equal to zero on this assumption. But I'm as, as I said right that I'm trying to leverage the solid uh, precursor films into a three phase uh, uh, system and and trying to see if 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 it, if it works out and if we can uh, get let's say reproduce the real life experiments by taking such uh, assumptions uh, in, 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 in the picture. OK, stop. Uh, so, so, sorry. Stop. Oh, sorry. I think there's a couple of more questions here. Um, so okay. um, Lee Jun, do you just want to go ahead and ask yourself? Yeah, thanks. Uh, let's do just one more question on the previous mm -hmm. slide. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not sure if I missed it when you told it earlier, but uh, if you run the same simulation, but without the precursor film, uh, will you mm -hmm. be able to run the simulation? On, and if yes, would the result change? I mean, it, it depends. So so ha, ha, so see uh, what precursor film helps you is 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 to is, is to is to uh, say what is going on at the three phase contact line, right? So okay. if I have two separate volume of fluid tracers, which is one is here, one is there, and I bring them close together, nothing happens because they are acting as two different liquids because because the two liquids don't know uh, that they have to coalesce, right? OK, OK. So, so uh, of course, I mean, what what people usually do is that they use uh, like diffuse interface methods, so like something like a face field method or or or, or one or, or 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 those things, where you can uh, where you can define some some potentials uh, such that uh, these two droplets will will want to coalesce. So, so what they are doing with uh, with defining some some different potentials in order to make the two drops coalesce, I'm trying to do that by uh, uh, by 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 geometry. Uh, so as to speak, which is by leveraging this precursor film, right? Okay. I mean, for example, if if you remember this 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 uh, this paper from Science Advances that I have with uh, with people from Mines, mm -hmm. uh, that's the drop on drop impact uh, problem. So where I have one drop which is on top and the other drop which is sitting on the substrate, and yeah. then I make this drop fall on the other one, right? And they don't coalesce. And the reason they don't uh, coalesce is because they are two different volume of fluid tracers with no uh, connection in between. So there is no precursor film in between, between them. So this is something that you need to uh, tell the, the the drops to do. Okay, okay. But okay. Uh, if 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 it was two same liquids, then it would coalesce, is it? Yeah, they, yeah, it would just coalesce. But then uh, this would this would just be like yeah, it, it would be two identical drops, and they would coalesce. Yes. Okay, okay. So your code, your code knows that if if there are like two different blobs of the same type of fluid then if they come close to each other they have to merge basically yeah yeah it depends on how you define your blobs so so if you define it so if, for example if you have a volume of fluid so, so we, we are all dealing with volume of fluid tracers right so if i say that both of these drops have the same tracer right so if i say okay f is equal to one here f is equal to one here f is equal to zero over there then they are identical okay yeah. uh, they would just coalesce OK, but if I say uh, uh, that, OK, that my F1 is one here and F1 is zero there and F2 is one here and F2 is zero there. Right, then I'm using two different fluids, F1 and F2. OK, OK. And since I don't have any contact line model, I don't have anything or any any anything at the contact line or I, I haven't defined the contact between one and two, they will not coalesce. They will they will always have a, a thin air layer between them all the time. OK, OK, and, and maybe just one one more question. Um, uh, so is uh, putting a precursor film the only way of doing this or are there other ways also of uh, so, allowing so, them to coalesce? Yeah, so so there is what uh, so there are other ways. So uh, what you can also do is you can define three volume of fluid traces instead of two. OK, so you have F1, F2 and F3. And then you you effectively get a contact line model, uh, which is also something that that has been done before, and people do that uh, as well. Uh, what I will and I will also show that there is a point where the model that I'm I'm I'm, I'm talking about would fail, right? And that's the point where those models uh, uh, help. So having three different uh, volume of fluid tracers help. Uh, but what I found out was that once you have 
a situation where at least one of the uh, spreading coefficients is positive so something mm-hmm. where, uh, s1 is positive uh, the methods uh, that are already available in the literature they don't work that well uh, i have that at the back of my slide so if 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 we if we if we, if we read here then i will also show those uh, okay. cases where, where these two uh, things differ yeah so and so then, right now just yeah Go yeah, uh, 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 and so like if you add the third uh, F three, then your mm-hmm. computation would become more expensive, right? Not really, no. Okay, so then uh, yeah. what's the advantage? Uh, wh- what's the best advantage you think like you have over not using an F so, three? So, so the best advantage is 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 uh, okay. Let me let me uh, do that. So let me. Um, Oh, sorry. Like, if you have, if I'm making you change everything, let's we can continue rather. Yeah, I, I, I don't. Okay, I don't have that slide with me right now. So, so, so we can just continue. Then it's fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, essentially, what what happens is, okay, I can. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, I can, I can try and do it here. So, so, so what happens is, so let's say you have three fluids. All right. So one is uh, this guy. Uh, second is is um, is 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 this guy. And the third is is this guy. Uh, okay, so so one uh, major issue that would happen is that there would be a vacuum between them, but then this vacuum is also of the order delta, so that's not a big issue. Okay, because it's also of the order delta. Uh, uh, errors of the order delta are fine. Uh, well, uh, these kind of errors. But what what ends up happening is, let's say if one of these three interfaces have s uh, greater than zero, okay, then what would happen is that you get a sharp corner. For example, let's say if if the yellow has an s greater than zero, then you get a sharp corner in yellow like this, and there your curvature would diverge. Okay. Okay. And and then that would lead to let's say uh, uh, like like uh, so, so it would lead to mass loss. It would lead to uh, you 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 would get these yellow droplets uh, uh, being ejected from this this uh, this 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 point here. So it won't be uh, as regularized as 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 these these methods. Uh, so because uh, if you, if you if you notice carefully, so if I play this video, oops. So if I play this video, and I stop it here, so you can see that this red uh, uh, point here has an uh, has has a sharp corner here. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but since I am using uh, uh, this precursor film model, that is regularized, and, mm-hmm. and that doesn't uh, uh, blow up. Or doesn't give you lead to a many uh, numerical errors. But if uh, one of these curvatures uh, diverge in in such a uh, such such a such a, um, a configuration as I have drawn over here, uh, you would get uh, numerical errors, which 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 might make your simulation uh, in, intangible uh, after some time. Okay. Okay. So that's yeah, that's yeah another reason why uh, for and that's why I keep telling that I would only be using these methods when one of the spreading coefficients are positive. Okay. One of the screening coefficient is, is positive. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. So so we can then move on to some examples. I mean, these discussions are good because I'm 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 not very close to to the end anyway. So I just have some examples. So if there are questions, I would it would be on on the on the uh, analogy or on the on the method or the assumption. Uh, please uh, ask them. It, it, it's it's good to have that discussion. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so there is this. Uh, um, uh, uh, I was talking about this Johnny's spreading law. So what is this? Is is, is when uh, we have uh, uh, like an oil drop spreading on a on a, on a, on, a, on, a, on a water bath, uh, for example, and then we can uh, uh, try and get this 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 spreading uh, uh, law, which is uh, and then there we will leverage again this precursor field assumption. So the assumption goes like this: that the moment this uh, one and two come in contact, there is a precursor film of one that spreads on on top of this uh, this bath and then at some point in in the future you would get a configuration which looks like this where uh, the, the 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 blue drop is is trying to spread on this uh, this water bath again this this uh, uh, scenario is far away from the from the center line uh, and uh, so i will take one more assumption before uh, getting to uh, johnny's uh, spreading law and that is uh, that i'm going to assume uh, both uh, uh, the the bottom and the and the top fluid to be symmetric, but still having an interface in between. Uh, this is I'm doing this just to have a symmetric situation where uh, deriving and writing this spreading law becomes easy. 
Okay, uh, it has nothing to do with the, with the physics. It's just an ease of 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 uh, doing these calculations. Uh, so now we can draw a control volume uh, which looks like this. For example, if if it was uh, if if these two liquids were not identical, right? Then you would have uh, gamma one and gamma two over here instead of gamma and gamma. So that's the only thing that changes. Okay. Uh, so so just to have an ease of uh, deriving or ease of writing equations up, I'm just going to assume that both top and bottom are are the same. Uh, but still have an interface in between. And then, uh, of course, so, so we can write the uh, F gamma as gamma times one minus cos theta. So of course there will be two here, uh, but that's just changes the prefactor anyway. So I'm gonna uh, remove that. And then the, 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 the F gamma force is still the same. That is gamma theta squared. And the F eta, now uh, for writing F eta, it, it depends on where uh, viscous dissipation is the highest, whether it is in, inside the drop or, or it is in the bulk. So I'm going to talk about one particular, one specific case where the dissipation in the bulk matters more than that in the in, in, the, in, the, in the droplet. And there uh, you you, uh, you can you can uh, write this uh, velocity gradient as uh, uh, u over uh, over 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 l, where l is some length scale inside the inside the bulk. And uh, uh, and, and 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 so I must admit as well that I could not still find uh, uh, Johnny's original calculation. So I even help. I even uh, took help of some of the French in uh, in, in, in our group, and even, even even they couldn't find it. So I'm still waiting to to read actually Johnny's original calculation. So the way I'm writing this calculation, I'm rederiving it from this paper, uh, which which uh, which which is uh, which came out in this uh, Journal of Collides and Interfaces. And uh, once we do that, uh, of course, again taking the assumption that R theta goes as h over r. And we can uh, bring this up over here. And if it's 2D, then, then R goes as 1, 1, 6, uh, T to the power 1, 6. And if it's 3D, then it goes as T to the power uh, 1, 8. Uh, so one thing which is uh, actually, which happens both in, in, uh, in, 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 in derive in, 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 let's say, confirming the spreading laws, both in, in case of three fluids, as well as even, even confirming Tanner's law uh, using numerics or experiments, is that these systems are, are uh, really slow. Uh, which means that you have to wait a long, long time. At the same time, I'm yet to find uh, some papers where, for example, if you if you want to derive Tanner's law, then you have one tenth. So, uh, uh, so ideally, I would want to have 10, 10 decades in time on the x-axis and one decade in, in R on the on the y-axis. But those are are tough to get. And I'm I'm still I'm yet to see uh, any any paper where where you get such a nice uh, uh, let's say agreement. If if you if you know about it. Uh, of, of any such paper, please let me know. Uh, anyway, so moving on. So what we can do with uh, with with trying to uh, recover Johnny's spreading law is is to uh, take a system which is uh, like this. So it's essentially uh, a simple uh, a drop, which is this, this drop. So this drop has a, a positive spreading coefficient, and both top and the bottom uh, uh, liquids are the same uh, in in this in this uh, simulation. And once I let it go, so initially there are some initial transients, but then you get this. Uh, uh, this this thin thin film that is trying to spread on top of this this bath, and if I attract uh, this uh, uh, R like the the the, uh, the location of that that three phase contact line in time, I can draw this uh, I can plot it up uh, like this. So it's R over R not as a function of T over T mu. Again, it's only uh, two orders in magnitude because it's it's really difficult to get uh, six orders. Also because at some point I will start to have my wall effects uh, kicking in as well. So, so right now my domain boundaries were uh, for, uh, much greater than than eight, but at some point I will also get those those uh, uh, issues. So, so this one uh, show you that okay, there are some initial uh, transients that come in because of this initial shape uh, probably, uh, but then it what is good to have is that this uh, sort of approaches this one sixth uh, spreading law. Uh, just to uh, uh, bring in like like how how it looks. So this is t is equal to zero. And if I let it go, uh, yeah. and you will see that after some time, that the shape doesn't change, uh, which is that you have this uh, this um, uh, this sort of a wedge that keeps on on flowing uh, to to the right. Uh, you might see some oscillations on the on the inset over here, but that is not because of uh, uh, that. That's not real. But that that is happening because because uh, of of how I am I'm tr trying to track this. Uh, a macroscopic contact line. I mean, as you can imagine, even uh, that, that there is no a discrete point in my domain that 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 has a contact line, right? So I have to uh, use some uh, additional algorithms to actually 
uh, find out where this uh, this 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 contact line is and you can see and that's why that that gives you this this oscillation in the in the y direction but that's uh, yeah that's not there uh, you, you have to trust me on that uh, so now you, if you, if you see so for example now not t by t mu is about 2500 so that's somewhere around uh, uh, well uh, around here uh, around there and then you see it's already um, uh, like like uh, steady in in like steady in 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 terms of shape and if you if you write down uh, Johnny's uh, calculations the way I did it, you would you would uh, this would be the best uh, snapshot to do it on because this is really the case where this uh, this there is a very uh, thin uh, shallow film spreading on on a, on a liquid bath. So moving on, so, so but but these are again, as I said, it's very difficult to uh, to to recover these scaling laws mainly because of 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 how how uh, how many decades you need in time and these are are really difficult to to get so but what we can do is okay uh, we as uh, we sort of say okay let's assume that this uh, this assumption works and let's try and look at some real life systems and that is where experimentalists uh, come into into play because uh, because the, the models that i usually develop in in uh, in, in 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 my uh, during my uh, things it's 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 not uh, it's it's more more of a pragmatic approach to try and see what is happening in real life right and for that let's try and see one such uh, example so this is uh, a three phase telecolic retraction so so th this is these are experiments done by uh, palavan and udo I, I guess i saw udo in the audience uh, so he he's here uh, so if you have any experimental questions uh, feel free to to ask him so what they do is they bring this oil droplet on a water air uh, interface and uh, uh, and the moment this this oil droplet approaches this this uh, this interface there is a, a thin water film that forms over here and at some point because of of noise uh, or or uh, yeah i mean um, because of some random noise this will rupture and then this uh, water film will rupture let's say somewhere there and then it would uh, it would grow in time okay uh, uh, and so we want to uh, to to model this uh, using numerics. And what we do, what we also see in in, in experiments is that at uh, uh, and what we also hope is that at t is equal to zero plus, so that that is uh, in in the early time dynamics, uh, the curvature of the drop uh, doesn't matter a lot. And then we can model this uh, by by using a, a much simpler uh, system, which looks like this, where you have an oil bath uh, which is which is here. So this is the oil droplet, but we are ignoring the curvature of the droplet. Because we're only thinking about uh, the very initial uh, uh, stages of the of the flow, and then you have this water film, which is which is going to to retract uh, on on this this oil air interface now. And uh, of course, there are two numbers which are important. One is this Onezog number. So this is two, by the way. This is not delta. Uh, this is, one is the Onezog number in the in the film, and another is the uh, Onezog number of the surrounding. And this uh, uh, this delta gamma that we were writing is essentially the net uh, surface tension force. Pulling on this this uh, this this water water uh, uh, film. Uh, now the assumption that we take, of course, is that uh, at t is equal to zero, uh, as you can see in in these uh, 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 snapshots. Uh, so we assume that there is a precursor film. So, so this is oil bath again. So this is oil, and uh, we assume that there is a precursor film of oil that covers the entire water drop at t is equal to zero. Okay, and and then we let it go, and of course we have to make a puncture here so that the the film would would retract. Uh, so let's see what happens. So if I play these, so now this is at uh, low Onezog number, so low Onezog as in like uh, uh, so if we use so what what they did in the experiments was to change the viscosity of the of the oil bath, right? So you can change the Onezog number of the oil uh, of the surrounding. So this is OHS, and that goes from point one. To, which is something uh, slightly bigger, so that's one, and then you can see this uh, difference in speed, of course, and also there's a difference in shape uh, because it's easier to push uh, uh, low viscous uh, uh, medium down as compared to uh, something that is more uh, is highly viscous. Another thing that you 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 would notice is these uh, in the reasons where you have these corner flows and then you have such high dissipation, so. Uh, I would I would clarify so on the right hand side the the log ten of I'm plotting the log ten of a rate of viscous dissipation so that the more black it is the higher uh, dissipation is 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 there uh, of course it's normalized with the maximum dissipation at a particular time uh, time instant so I'm just trying to uh, show this to uh, show different reasons of of dissipation uh, so as to speak 
on the left hand side it's it's velocity normalized with the uh, tip velocity and of course if if it goes even even further so these are uh, slightly older simulations so you will see some fluctuations going on but those are are solved now but you can really see you can really appreciate this uh, uh, this wedge that that is forming which which has with where the dissipation is concentrated so if i bring it out like this so you really see how the mechanism changes from uh, something where dissipation is is more uh, 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 scattered or or like let's say it's, it, there is no uh, it's it's actually highest at the tip over here but the the, the absolute values are are not that high uh, because the onizog number itself is 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 quite small there uh, but as you increase the onizog number you you get these uh, corner flows and 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 of course there is this this uh, macroscopic contact line over here which we are able to resolve by leveraging this uh, this precursor film uh, model so that was uh, one one uh, one one example so that was the three phase telecolic uh, which we are actually writing it up now so it should be um, uh, it should be written up soon uh, but another one is is drop encapsulation which was actually the first problem that that i tried uh, to tackle by using this this method but this is still a work in progress uh, so let me uh, bring it up so this was wait Okay, this is uh, my slides. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, 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 what is this drop encapsulation? So, we are again going to make another simplification, which is the opposite of the previous simplification. So, right now, uh, in in the previous case, you remember we we assumed that two was was infinite. So, in this simplification, we assume that one is infinite. So, we bring a, a water drop on a oil air interface, and then the oil uh, uh, bath will will engulf the water water droplet or or the the droplet number two in this in this uh, case, uh, so so we want to understand the dynamics that goes on from here uh, all the way to 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 there because we know that at t tends to infinity, uh, this if if we if we gently deposit this droplet on the on the on the bath at t tends to infinity, uh, this is the situation that would happen that that the that the water drop will just go inside the the oil uh, oil bath but but can we understand the dynamics? Uh, by using by leveraging this uh, this this precursor film model, uh, and for that uh, I was I was uh, happy to have uh, uh, to collaborate with Utkarsh and and Mazi where uh, they did this very nice experiment. So so Utkarsh deposits this uh, uh, water droplet or 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 glycerol uh, droplets uh, on on uh, uh, wait. Uh, uh, so so the, these these water or glycerol droplets on a silicon oil air interface and then let it go. So, and then this uh, this uh, uh, droplet will be engulfed by this uh, uh, silicon oil bath. So if you wait a bit longer, it will just uh, go 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 in, uh, and we can then do do some some simulations for that. So the initial shape. Uh, so there there are some calculations that go into uh, getting this initial shape, but I am not going to go into details of that. Uh, but uh, let's say at t is equal to zero, we have a scenario uh, like this because, of course, you can imagine that once you deposit a, a silicon oil droplet, it is going to def uh, when you deposit a, a water droplet, it is going to deform the silicon oil air interface, and that deformation uh, would make the uh, the interface have a shape like this. And then on uh, and then at t is equal to zero, if you if you say that okay, there is a, a, a precursor film of silicon oil that goes again from here all the way covering the droplet like this. And then we let the simulation go, and you will see you 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 get these very nice capillary waves that we also uh, that we also see in the, in the experiments, and and uh, then this uh, water drop or or the the droplet uh, would just uh, sink in. Again, similar to the previous uh, cases, on the on the left hand side I'm showing log ten of the uh, of the viscous dissipation rate. On the right hand side I'm plotting some sort of uh, momentum uh, of 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 different phases. So let me play this video once more. Just so that you can see how well we are able to capture these these dynamics. So again, this is still a work in progress. So we are still, um, yeah, uh, working on to to put both these things on top of each other. So that still uh, remains. Uh, but it's it's nice to have like let's say uh, a more dynamic uh, uh, dynamic picture of 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 this this process. But again, the question again comes up like, do precursor film exist for for three phase uh, systems? And uh, I asked the same question for a, for a, for us a, for the case for for wetting on solids, and there the answer was yes. But here the answer is we don't know. And in fact, I think there is also a paper from our group uh, which which kind of uh, leverages this uh, this precursor film, but 
we uh, but to be honest i am yet to see uh, like a paper or or like a like a measurement there where someone would go in and measure that the thickness of that precursor film in the same way as was done on solids so that still remains so so that part is i i haven't as uh, uh, as far as my 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 search goes i am still looking for for a, for a paper like that but thermodynamically or let's say uh, from from a more theoretical point of view uh, there is no reason why that precursor film will not exist okay uh, so now the question would come where does this model fail and embarrassingly it fails uh, in in a much simpler situation uh, because uh, uh, because because what, what is more common to have is is things like liquid lenses right and there uh, are things like finite element method and 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 those methods they they are quite good at capturing those uh, those those things for example it was so so this and this that is the place where the model fails which is something that legion uh, asked me uh, earlier in the in the in the talk because the moment uh, uh, you have a newman triangle right uh then uh, uh then then this model would fail uh, and, and the reason for that is is once you have let's say a liquid bath right in contact with a drop like this the equilibrium uh, uh scenario or the equilibrium state of such a configuration will always be a flat film and a drop sitting in 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 the in uh, inside the drop uh, in, inside the bath or the drop sitting outside the bath depending on the spreading coefficients of course so it's uh, so you cannot have a negative spreading coefficient while using a precursor film model because the assumption going in is that one of the liquid is completely wetting the other two right uh, and and that's where the model would fail so and for that uh, there are other models uh, that that would uh, that would help you for example if you use the three uh, fluid model so the three f1 f2 f3 uh, model that that I that I briefly explained uh, then you would uh, you would be able to Uh, get get these uh, simulations. So, so these are not done with the precursor film model, but rather with the other model, which works well for these cases. For the cases where uh, the spread, all the three spreading coefficients are are negative. Uh, and uh, with that, I would I, I come to to some some acknowledgments. So, uh, yeah, of course, I'm, I'm thankful to Detlef and and Mazi uh, Mazi particularly because uh, most of the discussions going in. Uh, while developing this uh, this precursor film analogy for for three fluids uh, happened uh, over over coffee and and discussions with with, with Mazi and and so it's 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 a nice little uh, uh, method that that one can use in order to simulate real real world uh, systems. Uh, uh, with that, I, I thank you for your attention. Uh, of course, I uh, as as you might know uh, that I am a very a strong pro uh, proponent of um, of, of uh, uh, free software programs. So all the codes uh, that are that that I have used uh, in in the in the, in the talk are are freely available both at the Basilisk uh, website as well as on my uh, personal GitHub account as well. And and they have been there for uh, yeah for as and as as I as I make improvements, I would I would keep updating those uh, uh, those codes. Okay. With that, uh, I thank you. And please, if you have questions, yeah. Thanks. Um, I will applaud uh, uh, for everybody. Um, I think there will be a couple of questions. I know I have some, uh, but I would like to start with the audience. So um, Minkush has raised his hand. So Minkush, why don't you just go ahead and? Uh, yes. Uh, thanks for the nice talk, Vatsil. Uh, so my question is about the different challenges in the two problems like you have one oil drop coming out like the work with mm -hmm. Pallo van Dudo and then that you said it's kind of you know how it's happening but then the other part where the drop is going in so what is the difference in the challenges why it's the second one is more difficult is it because the there is a oil precursor film and when the other part is there is a water precursor film and the oil is kind of penetrating it so no, I there is never a, a water precursor film uh, so the precursor film would only form uh, for the liquid or for the fluid which which has a positive spreading coefficient so for both the both the cases so whether it be a case which is uh, which is uh, here right yeah. or whether it be the case which is which is the other one in both the scenarios uh, uh, oil is what forms the precursor film because because it's 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 energetically favorable for the oil to cover both the water as well as air interface like have an interface with both water as well as air rather than water to have an interface with 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 air uh, so just to so basically 
yeah yeah so so i i would i would also try to let's say answer that so basically if i want to get a scenario which is on the right here right mm -hmm. so i have this this blue is is oil and this uh, sorry this brown is oil and the and the blue is 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 water uh, so you can think of this as a superposition between two things one is uh, this oil uh, bath and the other is this uh, water uh, tracer here Okay, and when when once these two fall on top of each other, of course there are some algebra that goes into determining properties, of course, but that that's something that I'm not going to talk about right now. Uh, but if you bring them both together, then you get a scenario which looks like that, and there you have a precursor film of this oil that goes all the way to this uh, over this this water film, and that's the assumption. That's the biggest assumption that that we make while trying to model this uh, configuration. Oh, okay. So why is then the other case more difficult to do if the precursor film is the same? And also, so what is the challenge between the third last one, like and the last one that you still it's ongoing work and you don't understand it completely? Uh, time. Ah, okay. So no. So I mean, I just you know like if the second so, so, and the third case no, were no. similar. So yeah. They, 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 so so for me, like modeling it is is not that different. OK, uh, so for me, modeling it is just changing configurations. But of mm -hmm. course, uh, when, when we when uh, you, you would like to have a, a, a better understanding before, let's say, publishing something, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and that is something that we still are working on. So it's, it's more of a time, like physical time constraint rather than. Uh, ah, OK, I thought there is some extra physics which you don't understand yet. OK, yeah. And we are working on it, yes. OK, yeah, thanks. Okay, are there any other questions? Um, okay, I have one. Um, so, um, in your work of the Taylor-Kulik uh, retraction, um, you mentioned mm -hmm. that you um, that you're already writing it up, and and um, I'm looking forward to reading it. It looks very very interesting, and I mean beautiful simulations, uh, of course, but. Um, you didn't really show any, um, let's say, comparison between experiments and simulation. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah. I'm assuming you have something like that, right? Because otherwise, I mean, <laughs> why, why would we write it up? Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so no, no, we, we we do we, yeah we, we do have that. So that was actually let me um, bring up uh, let me just bring up the uh, the draft. Why not? You don't so show the slides yeah, from fun. this morning, no? They have the. Oh, yeah, animation. that. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that also works. Let's do that. So, um, uh, this 21. So, it was Andrea. This one. So, yeah, okay. The first one, yeah, sure. Why not? So, uh, this is. Um, uh, so, 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 let's let's see. Uh, essentially, so it's 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 a bit uh, involved uh, in terms of the, of the graph. Uh, so uh, okay, I, I lost my cursor. Give me a minute. Yeah. So this is uh, so this uh, so let's look at the bottom graph. So this is Weber number uh, defined uh, based on the film velocity. So I can define it essentially. Uh, Weber f is nothing but the uh, density times the velocity of the film squared times the uh, the thickness of the of the film divided by the net surface tension force, so that is two times gamma, uh, essentially. And and on the on the on the x-axis, we have Onizog number of the surroundings. Onizog number based on the viscosity of the oil uh, bath that I was showing you before. And, and what we see is that if the Onizog. So yeah? just remind me again, the film you mean the water, like the water film. The water. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So so um, let me see. Just to remind you about the so this is the configuration I'm talking about. It's a water film on a oil bath uh, between oil air interface. Thank you. And and then uh, uh, yeah uh, so uh, so 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 we we have we, we we it looks like that. And then uh, if, if the Onizog number of the surrounding is small enough, then you get this uh, plateau. And so Weber number remains constant. And 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 you yes, and there are there are multiple set of data data points over here. So in, in the classical Taylor Kulik that is. Uh, the film retracting in in passive medium that that will uh, that gives you that a Weber number is is constant, right? And that we can recover when the Onizog number is is very small. And then you have uh, two different uh, cases here. So I ask you to look only at the case which says three phase. And in the three phase, the black data points are the experimental data points from 
uh, Udalok. Uh, those are the uh, black uh, circles over here uh, from uh, from Udalok and Empalov's uh, experiments. And then you have the red data points again from their uh, experiments. And and of course uh, the blue data points here are the, the simulation results, and they fall on top of uh, each other essentially. So this is uh, one way of yeah saying that the model works. That okay that we can reproduce uh, the the results uh, from 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 the from the experiments. Okay. And of course there are some scaling laws and so on which we try to derive. Some of which we some of which we are successful in deriving from first principles. Some of which we are not. But for that, I, I I leave that up to um, uh, when when the paper comes out. So thank you. Should have some 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 uh, surprises in the paper. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Um, any it's, other? It's also going to be my APS talk if 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 APS ah. happens by. Then. Okay, yeah. nice. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, always depending. I mean, it will for sure happen in some yeah. form, but the question will be <laughs> whether we will be in Phoenix or not. Um, but yeah. uh, looking forward to so, it. So, yeah, so b before we go on, so I because this is something that Lijun asked and then Minkush um, also uh, asked, uh, and that was that why don't we use the three fluid model in order to simulate cases where one of the fluids has a positive spreading coefficient? So this video uh, has, uh, I hope this is a video by the way. Okay, let me see. Yeah, this is a video. So this video, uh, uh, I'm using three different polymer fluid tracers in order to simulate the uh, the, the 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 drop uh, so the red is the oil drop impact on a water air interface and and this is the same method that that gave you these results very nice uh, liquid lenses and so on it's the same exact same method where my model fails basically but this is the uh, this is the more uh, commonly used model and what you will see now is that you see that there is a a, a very high curvature for for the red uh, 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 like say the oil drop and then you see these uh, tiny uh, droplets that that are shedded uh, at the contact line because because we don't have the correct contact line model uh, so as to speak uh, uh, because because one of them is is infinite so you have that infinite curvature and then that leads to these issues so this is one of the main reasons why I had to yeah switch to a uh, to to a to a newer uh, model that 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 leverages precursor film rather than using the more conventional uh, three phase models. Okay, um, there was just um, a question in the chat, which I'm just going to uh, repeat uh, to you. Um, so uh, Li Jun uh, wanted to uh, know how you pinpoint where the contact line ends and the precursor starts. Yeah. And um, basically, yeah, I mean, since you're plotting the radius, you somehow have to define the contact line. I mean, you also briefly mentioned it, I think, when you talked about your uh, the inset in your in your uh, Johnny's uh, spreading law um, validation. Yeah, but maybe you could uh, I, I, break that just a little bit more. So OK, um, let's go back to this picture. Uh, let me kind of skip it. So. Okay, let's just do it like this. So can can you see this uh, this this part? Like is is it, is it, is it properly visible? Okay. So now now you see like uh, while while uh, the moment I define these two curvatures, uh, these two interfaces, uh, there are curvature fields associated with that. So you have K, kappa one and kappa two. So if if both uh, kappa one and kappa two are defined, then you are actually at at this leg of the of the interface. If only kappa one is defined, then you are at this point of the of of the interface. And if only kappa two is defined, then you are in the at the bottom. So essentially, you you I try to look for an intersection between these three uh, uh, reasons, and that would give you uh, like like uh, uh, the location of your of your of your of your uh, uh, contact like a macroscopic contact uh, uh, point uh, within uh, a precision of delta, of course. So so that's why the the film was was I mean the the, the inset was going up and down, and that was because of this this delta uh, uh, reason. That, that's the, the grid size essentially, but that's how you 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 pinpoint where this uh, macroscopic contact line would be. So that's this point here, and that is by looking for the intersection between uh, kappa one defined, kappa two not defined, kappa one kappa two both defined, and kappa two defined, kappa one not defined. And the intersection of those reasons would give you this uh, macroscopic contact line. Okay, thank you. Um, I think that. Uh, that explained it, but if it's still unclear, yeah, okay, I think it's it's clear. Um, 
Are there any other questions? Uh, uh, yes, I have a small question like about the cases where actually you see three fluids. Uh, so in the sense that you mostly showed two liquids and the air uh, as surrounding. But is so this method like practically was it mostly for these kind of flows or also there are some cases where you use three liquids or some other cases where it can be applied? I mean, it's, it's just a matter of changing properties. I mean, it, it can be applied to. In fact, it would work even 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 better. So so uh, wait, let me uh, try and show you that. Uh, so I mean, so, so the short answer is yes, it is applied for for any generic uh, three liquids, uh, provided that one of them has a, a positive spreading coefficient, of course. Uh, but let me go to uh, this scenario. OK, so here, for example, uh, what I assume is that both top and so there is no air here, right? Because because here I was assuming that both these liquids are identical, top and bottom, uh, with an interface in between, of course. Uh, so that means uh, that it, uh, that I'm using it for also for cases where it's non-air, uh, essentially. Yeah. So what I meant was like uh, physically, were there things where there were three fluids, or it was mostly like for you as a challenge that okay, let's simulate oh, okay. something as a three liquid or three yeah, phase fluid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you can you can imagine uh, like an air bubble passing through a water oil interface, for example. Okay. Yeah. There you have three fluids. Ah, wait, okay, it's, it's okay. You can say it's again what air. So let's see. Um, I don't know. I mean, you can have three different liquids. So maybe one of them is is an exotic uh, 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 droplet of some liquid which is uh, lighter than than water, but uh, 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 lighter than both water and uh, the the oil on top and and then it would try to pass through this these two interfaces i mean i mean yeah. it, it, it exists and i am pretty sure the systems exist in real life okay yeah. if i may comment experimentally um if we get a student um you'll see experimental data but yeah i don't have time to do it right now so yeah. okay um are there any other questions I have one last question. Um, maybe this can yeah. also then be uh, a roundup. So you ended your your very very nice presentation with basically the the question or or the 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 challenge for experimentalists to prove that this uh, liquid on liquid precursor film actually exists. Um, so it's a very yeah. I mean it's a bit of a, a yeah. I'm not sure if, if there's an answer to this question, let's say like this, but um, so you start your simulations already assuming that the precursor film is there, right? So yep. how would you like, what would you think is a reasonable time scale for basically if, I, if I'm imagining the oil droplet pinching the, the water, right? Like the, the telecubic uh, the problem that, that we've been talking about. So if I imagine the oil droplet pinching up the air water interface, basically, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, how fast do we expect the oil to actually cover the water interface? You know what I mean? Like if it's so, so like, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, yeah, so, so you, you mean that you mean the oil precursor film, if it if it exists, how fast will it cover the oil? Uh, how fast will it cover the water interface, right? That's what you mean, I guess. Yes. Uh, short answer is I don't know. Uh, I don't know, and that's not just that I don't know because I haven't I haven't thought of it before because I have thought of it a lot. Uh, well, the assumption going in, of course, in my model, as you mentioned, is that I assume at t is equal to zero there is a precursor film. But if that happens in real life, it would mean that the uh, precursor film moved at an infinite velocity, which is not possible. So it has to have a finite velocity. But those velocities would often be governed by the molecular interactions and the and the and the thermo thermodynamics of the of the system, and not really anything that you and I can do with continuum mechanics. So the reason I don't know is because I don't have a uh, have a definite answer to what is that velocity scale with which molecules move, for example. Right. Yeah. So it would be the it would be that uh, velocity scale. Definitely smaller than speed of light. I I hope. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, uh, and and I think the way to answer that would be if you if if first if if in experiments one could uh, calc one could measure the precursor film, 
then maybe one can also think about uh, resolving the motion of because I don't know if, if it's possible by the way because uh, these films are, are are nanometers in 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 thickness right and these are like, few molecules and again there's an equilibrium like there's a there's a constant equilibrium between these molecules and the air and because it's it's all statistical at some point yeah. so I don't know hmm. what would be that uh, that that speed you and everybody else <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thanks. It's it's very um, it, it, you you put it into a nice perspective. Um, I think at the end of your talk, you also said something like there is no physical reason why it shouldn't exist. Yes. Um, so I well, mean, that's the hope. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, 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 until until proven otherwise, that's the hope. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, there is there is one more one more uh, let's say uh, level to that. The reason. Okay. Even if the precursor film would exist, it would only have a thickness of few uh, molecules, right? But the moment I write it in terms of my numerics, so the moment I incorporate it in my numerics or, or, or use it as, as a model, I'm already assuming a precursor film which is much much thicker than the real precursor film because it's it's, it's it has to be of the order of my grid size, right? And and then you could also question me on that, but you know, so 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 what I'm doing is I'm really not uh, looking at uh, let's say for example if I talk about uh, uh, oil uh, uh, spreading on a solid substrate. Then I'm not really looking at oil spreading on 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 a on a zero contact angle uh, substrate, but rather oil uh, spreading on a substrate which has which already has an, a pre-wetted film of oil on it, right? And and the assumption there is that if that pre-wetted film would go to zero thickness, then it would uh, 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 mimic the system where you have a precursor film, and that's essentially the leap of faith, or uh, if you may, we are taking. While using these uh, these these assumptions and these methods. Okay. Um, thanks. That's. Um, I think that's also a nice uh, point to 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 stop. Um, unless anybody has any other comments or questions. Just first last comment to this discussion. So for now, you have validation in terms of the work when the oil drop is coming out of the water etc. Right? So that's <laughs> the only validation for now, or are there other validations? You know of such model or anything? So, so, so we we do have uh, I I do have qualitative validation with uh, uh, with 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 Utkarsh's experiments. Uh, I, I don't know if Utkarsh is in in the audience, but we are yeah working on that. Uh, but uh, but but there's there's that that. Uh, I mean also okay he's here. Uh, also also there are uh, these cases where. We have to also look for cases where the contact line matters, right? Because, for example, if if you look at compound drop impact on on substrates, right? And and I tried and I tried doing those with 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 my code as well. But more often than not, most of those processes, at least at high impact velocities, are governed more by uh, inertia rather than by uh, by by contact line motion or this this what happens at the at the corner, right? So you need to find uh, test cases. Where the flow in those corners matter, uh, rather than uh, looking for generic three-phase systems, because there are many three-phase systems. But more often than not, in those systems, it's possible that maybe the the, the, the contact line doesn't even matter. You know, that all, all, all it matters is 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 how fast the flow is, or the inertia of the system, or, or some other uh, uh, forces in the in the system. So it's a very small subset of problems. For example, uh, I think Mikhil has has some work on on on, on lens coalescence, right? But you, you you won't be able to do those with this uh, with this uh, 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 method. And the reason is our liquid lenses, uh, because there are because you have a, a finite Newman triangle at the at the other end of of the coalescence. Of course, you can you can probably look at uh, at, at at what happens at the a point where both of them have merged, and then it, it would have it might have slightly different dynamics, but yeah, but but those things are are, are there. So yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So. Thanks, um, Ricardo. Do you want to? So you mentioned a comment. Do you want to also? Ah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Sorry, but I was not here at the beginning of the presentation. Uh, but uh, no, no, that's fine. It's just recorded, so I will send it to you. Ah, yeah, that's very good. So I can watch it later. Um, yeah, I just wanted to comment that somehow my intuition tells me that yeah, indeed, the a precursor thing should be possible somehow. I was just thinking, well, we have like when there are surfactants, they will form a film at the top, right? So maybe that would happen for other liquids too. Uh, but but, but, but even for surf. 
even for surfactants do you have uh, has, has anyone measured the thickness i uh, know that i don't know that i don't know i'm just telling me that so, my intuition tells me that okay. that that yeah, might yeah. go in the right direction but i might yeah. be wrong yeah. yeah no no that's the hope i mean thermodynamically it makes sense that it would exist but the thing is un until someone tells me that see this is the measurement and proves that okay uh, this yeah, is okay. this is this is the thickness i mean i mean uh, uh, stored i mean i mean uh, logically it makes sense so, so for example the precursor film so i, I showed you I, mean, i showed one one paper from i think 1989 where they actually went in and measured this this thickness but people had known uh, much earlier than than that paper came out that there should be a precursor film even tanner i mean although tanner uh, derived his uh, 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 his spreading law uh, by using a lubrication uh, force uh, system but in his paper there is a, a section on preweighted films as well so mm -hmm. so people knew that there has to be a precursor film on solids for 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 a long time uh, even before that film was actually seen in experiments mm -hmm. and yes. in, in fact for example even for partially wetting uh, uh, situations uh, you could also uh, because because it's all, at the end it's it's it's, it's what makes uh, most sense thermodynamically right so even for the cases where you have a, a young dupre contact angle right even in those cases uh, you could have uh, uh, molecules of 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 the drop uh, being adsorbed on the substrate so so people yeah. have also tried looking for those uh, those films and i think they have been able to find it as well so even mm. there but then that's not precursor film so so there has to be a distinction between uh, uh, okay, let's I say uh, films that you get from adsorption uh, and the films that you get from thermodynamics from from these um, uh, these these uh, these analogies yeah Oh okay I didn't know that that, that differentiation okay yes. No there there is a difference yeah th th those two films are not the same Oh okay nice yes. I mean it's, it's it's a nice it's I think it's it's a uh, there's a nice uh, review article from from Bon 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 et al and uh, from from Dejan as well I mean they they they, oh, they, they talk that it. Was great. Yeah yeah go on go on If you can sh if you could share that review that would be yes, nice Yes yes Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are two two reviews of modern fluids which are which are very nice. Uh, which okay. talk about this. Uh, there is also a book from from uh, uh, Daniel Bond. I mean, compiled by Daniel Bond. I think I forgot the name, but yeah, it's also there. Yeah, I will I will share those too. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um. I think now we can round it up. Um. So thanks, Vatsal, uh, a lot for for this talk. It was very nice. It was very enlightening. And um, thanks everybody else for for participating. Also, thanks especially to Yusuf for sharing um, Basilis codes while uh, Vatsal was talking. And uh, thanks a lot for that. And um, yeah. Uh, thanks everybody for being here. Have a very nice afternoon. And I will stop the recording. Yeah.